You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone. It's a special episode today. We are doing a budget upgrade of the new pre-cons from March of the Machine. That is one machine. Today, we're talking about the call for backup pre-con. It's a Naya deck. It's green, white, and red. And we've called in special guest to do this upgrade. It's Lady Danger. Hello, it's me, Lady Danger. <laughs> you rang. <laughs> I called in for backup, and I called Lady. Uh, so this is a white, green, red backup command deck mm -hmm. uh, it's based around the backup uh mechanic, mechanic from the set uh which is basically you put a counter on something and it gets whatever the little it gets an ability yeah it gets an ability from the card that yeah it sends using. a scout ahead uh <laughs> so we're going to do budget upgrade we're going to add 10 cards to the cards in this box and we're going to take 10 cards out and this time we're sticking on a cheaper budget it's only going to be Ten dollars to upgrade this precon and get it into fighting shape, so you feel good and confident about the deck you're playing at your game store or with your local play group. But first, if you pick up any of these cards, if you hear any cards, you're like, I gotta have that. I need them. I need it. I gotta go to Card Kingdom dot com slash command to pick up all of the magic singles that you are looking for your magic players we know you're going to buy them you can support the show while doing so and you can do it from a place that will send the exact card that you're looking for in the condition in the printing in the same box to your doorstep uh, what I like about Card Kingdom is you can do huge orders of cards and they will all show up at exactly the same time. And I can run through a list and see if I got all the cards I was looking for. Perfect. And sleeve them up. And now my deck is like complete. Yes. And I'm not chasing down four or five envelopes <laughs> like I lost in the mail at some <laughs> point, emailing different people being like, hi, I know. I know. I paid three dollars to ship a 30 cent card across this country, but I need you to send it. Card Kingdom is easy to work with. It shows up on time exactly how you expect it. You should use it. Go to cardkingdom.com slash command. And while you're using our affiliate links, while you're supporting the show, you can also support us by going to ultrapro.com slash command. Pick up all of the magic accessories, all of the gaming accessories that you need to keep your collection looking cool, keeping it safe. And especially with the new organized. stuff. Yeah, especially yeah. with the new stuff. When a new set comes out, you and with the especially with the commander stuff, you can get a box that matches your commander. You can get a playmat that matches your commander and your sleeves. So you're all decked out with brand new stuff that mm. reflects how you play. If you feel passionately about Bright Palm Soul Awakener, we were going to talk about in a little bit, you can get them on a playmat. You can do like represent the backup squad. Uh, yeah, it, they have all of the official licensing so you can get the coolest stuff to r deck out your battlefield. Uh, plus, they also have like a secret layer drops and crazy stuff that goes really fast. So make sure you're going to ultrapro.com slash command to stay on the up and up for what is going on on their website. Uh, the other way to support our show is directly. You can go to patreon.com slash command zone uh, and become a patron of the show. There's a ton of cool perks for doing so. Yep. Uh, you get a early access to extra turns and to game nights. So you get to see it a day early. And my favorite part about this is that when like patrons get to watch things a day early yeah. so basically they're seeing like this rough draft and they'll be like is it supposed to look like that they'll like catch little details mm -hmm. that the editing team can make before the final draft goes out to the public so come and like p make sure that we're all in perfect ship shape before it goes out to the public and we do extra content uh our turn talks so if yeah. you you get to for our extra turn episodes if you want to see our post episode post chat that you have with your friends analysis that's on there too and only available on there yeah uh turn talks is so much fun i love doing it i love looking back on the game and being finding out where i made mistakes and hearing what my opponents were just about to do if something hadn't happened uh what that last card was on top of their library ton of fun uh so make sure you become a patron also we shout out one lucky patron every single episode and we dedicate a, the whole episode to them and this episode is dedicated to, to kevin, kevin phillips. phillips you, you rock, rock. We did that so good. That was really good. It was really good. <laughs> you rock, Kevin. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Couldn't do it without you and patrons like you. 
All right, let's get into the main topic. We've got some cool stuff to get through. We're talking about the call for backup pre-con. Uh, this episode, we're going to add 10 cards. We're going to take 10 cards out, and we're only going to spend 10 cards to do it. But before we get into that, we're going to talk about what comes in this box. <laughs> what comes in the box, what Rachel? Comes in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> so these pre-cons are special. They come with a 100-card commander deck, and they also come with 10 plane chase cards, which is a special way to play commander or any kind of magic. Uh, there, we'll have an episode, or you can check out how to play plane chase. It's a ton of fun. You roll a dice, you go to different places, crazy stuff happens. Plane chase games are so wild. But there's five new plane chase cards, five reprinted plane chase cards. We're not going to talk about them when we talk about strategy, but they will be uh, included when we talk about the the, uh, the like monetary value of the deck. All right, uh, so let's get into the commanders of this deck, the most important part. Who's the face commander of this deck? The face commander is Bright Palm Soul Awakener. He's the main commander. He is one color list, a red, a green, and a white. That is also known as Naya, if mm -hmm. you're not familiar. And it says, backup one, when this creature enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it gains the following ability till end of turn. And then whenever this creature attacks, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on target creature that creature can't be blocked by creatures with power to or less this turn. I think backup is so clever. It's, it's really cool. It's this very cool way of like giving giving an ability haste, mm -hmm. basically. If you yep. already have a creature on the battlefield, you can grant that ability. The like it's a, usually an attack trigger or something. Yeah, and sometimes to another creature. Yeah, it, there's so many cards in the actual deck, and we'll probably cover them once we get to them. But it'll be like. Do and then it'll be a word underneath it, and then you get to give them that thing. Mm -hmm. It's very fun. So Bright Palm puts a plus one counter on a, cr a creature you already have on the battlefield or themselves, and then it says whenever it attacks, double the number of plus one counters on target creature. So it could just turn one to two or six to twelve, uh, depending on how many counters are <laughs> on it. And it makes it difficult to block. No chumps allowed. No, no, no. All right, so that's the face commander of this deck, but often precons will come with an alternate commander or something else you can put it in the command zone as another option, and this one is no different. And uh, I love it. It's so cool. I mean, this card is insanely powerful. It's Shalai and Halar. For one red, green, white, so one in Naya, same as Bright Palm. It is an angel elf, a 3-3 three, three with flying and vigilance, and it says whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, Shalai and Halar deals that much damage to target opponent straight to their face you don't even gotta attack you just gotta do the thing the deck wants to do it's it's like so fast because normally you put counters on stuff and mm -hmm. people are like uh oh that's gonna be big next turn but you mm -hmm. put all these counters on something you just deal damage oh i love it so much it's reminiscent of a card we saw in all will be one uh all will be one yeah. is the card <laughs> that that it's reminiscent of <laughs> from the set all will be one uh, which is an enchantment. It says three red, red. Whenever you put one or more counters on a permanent or a player, all will be one who deals that much damage to target opponent creature and opponent controls or planeswalker and opponent controls. So it's like a limited all will be one sort of. Yeah, it's like a limited one on just or a limited all will be one on your commander. Yeah. It's like not as crazy as all will be one, but like it's Pretty still really close. strong. <laughs> and it still goes infinite with all of the things that All Will Be One goes infinite with. Mm -hmm. With like the Red Terror, uh, which says whenever a red source you control deals damage to one or more permanents and or players, put a plus one plus one counter on the Red Terror, which triggers Shalai and Halara and it shoots a damage. Put a counter. Shoot a damage. Put a counter. Shoot a damage. Put a counter. Shoot a damage. Put a counter. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a lot of laughing. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, these are no fun. They're supposed to be no fun at all. It also goes infinite with War Elemental, which is a similar thing. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not a big fan of going infinite, but yeah. I mean, if you are, those are definitely cards that yeah. you're, you should put in there. It just shows the power of Shalai and Halar, I mm -hmm. think. Like I think it's how universal, much, too. Yeah. I think one thing I do like is a lot of the times I feel like... Oh, I've done a couple of these budget upgrades before mm -hmm. and the face commander and the secondary commander, if you will, one's kind of like really not great. <laughs> but these are both very strong in their own way. Right. Um, and because they are the same exact mana cost, I mean, I'm not complaining at all. Like right. you could easily go with either one of these. I, I agree. And in this set of pre-cons, it's, it's very similar, honestly, for 
each precon is the face commander is more tethered to the set. Mm-hmm. It like this one has backup. It's a set specific mechanic that uses plus one plus one counters. And then the backup commander, the Shalai and Halar, is a more general commander, which yeah. it is less tethered directly to March of the Machine. Um, so it's cool. Uh, there's a lot of options here. Uh, Shalai and Halar is honestly the most terrifying commander I've seen in a while. <laughs> so much damage. All right, so let's talk about what is in the 99 of this deck just right now. Uh, We're going to break it down into the different categories of cards and how the deck actually works. We're going to talk about the stats. 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 It's probably way too long. No. I think it is right on time. (laughs) So this card is, this deck, like any deck, is broken up into different categories mm-hmm. that make it work. Yeah. So what's in the 99 of this deck right now? So in the 99 of this deck, we have 15 ramp cards. Wow. That's a lot That's a of lot. ramp cards. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, and our commander's not even that expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have four card draw cards. Mm, quite low. Mm. We have eight single target removal cards. On the lower end. Yeah. But it, acceptable still. We have one board wipe. Okay. Which, I mean, you mm-hmm. you probably don't want to wipe your board, so... Yeah, you this know. is a very commit-to-the-board type of deck. Yeah, and then there's 38 lands. All right. Uh, 38 lands is about where we're expecting with pre-cons. It's a great place to start. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you feel like you need less, you could take one or two out. If you feel like you need more, you could add one or two. It's a great place to just feel it out. Yeah. And then we have, like, the cards that are essentially functioning how you're... The wheels on your deck... Right, right. It's the it's a, how the deck works. It's mm-hmm. the the meat and potatoes of of like what it needs to make your commanders function. Yeah, we have thirty eight plus one plus one counters. I mean, you gotta have them. <laughs> you gotta put counters on an encounter deck. That's a lot. We have eleven plus one plus one counter payoffs. Okay. And then we have seven cards that are going to grant you evasion. Great. So make sure that your big creatures aren't just getting chumped by your opponents and you can make sure that you get through and deal that actual damage. All right. So this definitely looks like how we would we would see a plus one counter deck play out. 100%. Traditionally, where it's like you want a very high density of cards that put plus one plus one counters on your creatures. Yeah. um, Because that's... What that's what the commander do, which I do appreciate because, like I said before, a lot of the decks in the past sometimes have like there you could go five different ways for it, right? And it's very confusing, mm-hmm. and there's just a lot going on. Um, so with this, it's a very straightforward. You're gonna put plus one plus one counters on things, assuming you're also just going to attack. <laughs> it's it's very Naya Smash, which I love. It's straightforward. Make them big, hit them big. Yep. All right, this is, this is very fun. All right, so there's two good options for your commander, but mm-hmm. a lot of the times when we see this kind of deck, it could pull one way or mm-hmm. pull another where it really wants one in the command zone. Yeah. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of a balance, but who would you put in the command zone if you were building this deck? For me, personally, I would 100% run Shalai and Halar. Yeah, this is very, they're so powerful. It's so powerful. And, you know, like I said, both of them very good, super strong. But when I'm doing a budget upgrade personally, I want to simplify mm-hmm. what's going on. Yeah. I love backup. It is really cool, but it's just going to add a lot of different things and triggers that I need to remember. Mm. I'm not great at remembering things. So I would, you know, I pick that not only to simplify the plus one plus one counters, but to just do more damage. Right. It just, it says exactly what you're doing. Put counters blast. Fire the laser. Yeah. <laughs> and I am all for that kind of simplicity. Plus, they're very, very powerful. With 38 cards that put plus one, plus one counters on creatures, it means you're going to be shooting a lot of lasers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is going to be a laser concert up in here. <laughs> all right. So we're going to get into the swaps that we make in this deck. But first, we want to talk about the actual value that comes in the product that you're buying. Like we said, there's 100 cards that actually go in the commander deck, plus the 10 plane chase cards, five reprints, five uh, new plane planes and they total up to one value i'm going to provide the drum roll and you'll provide the total reprint value okay (gasps) total reprint value is 89 dollars and 50 cents okay so a reasonable number yeah this is 
uh, it's worth noting that the total reprint value is taken at time of release, which is before these decks are announced. Often when these decks get announced, a lot of those prices will drop because cards are being reprinted, which is just how reprints work. So this value we're comparing to other values of command of commander precons at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's a rough comparison between this precon and precons of the same general pricing. Obviously, yeah. we don't have MSRP anymore. Uh, oh, also, there are 77 reprints that make up this or 77 reprint cards that make up this price tag. So 77 cards totaling the value of $90.50. Mm-hmm. And if we compare that to previous precons, it's ugh, in the it's right in the middle, I it's guess. Def- I think it's kind of dead in the middle. Yeah. So the Commander Strixhaven precons averaged out to about $88. The Forgotten Realms precon value averaged to about $115. Mm-hmm. So quite high. The Neon Dynasty precons value were quite low, despite being fun. Yeah. They're about $73. Uh, Baldur's Gate precons up to $104. Brothers War was about $95. And All Will Be One averaged to be about $101. So $89.50 puts us right in the zone that we're about expecting yeah but nothing to jump for joy over yeah it's not like insane yeah uh but it is fun yeah and pre like counters are counter cards go in tons of decks Mm -hmm. so they have a ton of flexibility even if they don't have like a huge amount of value yeah all right so we're going to break down the notable reprints in this deck the ones that you're going to be excited to see get another printing we separate them into two categories five dollars and more and two dollars to five dollars. Uh, so let's talk about the cards that are worth five dollars or more in the deck. There's only one. Oh boy, all will be one. Uh, <laughs> only one. <laughs> uh, and it is Colonian Hydra at Ooh. nineteen doll hairs. I mean, that's a pretty good price tag for a reprint. Like w- this is the kind of price we want to see show up in one or two of these cards. Yes. So $19 is great. We definitely want to bring that down, especially for a card. It's a Hydra. It's like a fairly, it's a fairly casual card, mm-hmm. but a very pl- powerful plus one plus one counter deck. Okay. So there's only, only one over $5, a little disappointing. A uh, little. Yeah. So you can see why there isn't the huge amount of value, but let's talk about the cards between two and $5. All right. Well, hold on. Cause we're going to shoot right through this. Yeah. Uh, we've got flame shadow conjuring coming in at four, 50 mm. Strionic Resonator coming in at 450. Love this reprint. Haven't gotta seen keep it in that a while. price low. Yeah. We got Gyre Sage at mm-hmm. 275. Gavany Township at 250. Kodama's Reach at 250. Mm-hmm. Semester's End at 225. Nice. Soul Ring at 225. Chaotic Aether at two dollars. Jund at two dollars. And Grove of the Dream Pods at two dollars. Okay, so th- so those last three are planes. They're plane chase cards. Oh well, that's uh, great to know. So they they aren't actually in the in the actual ninety nine of the deck, but they do add value to the product that you're buying. So cha- chaotic ether, Jund, and Grove of the Dream Pods are all plane chase reprints. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so there's thirteen cards between two and five dollars. Uh, that's a great number. We would, these are a lot of these are cards that we want to see reprinted to keep that price manageable, so people can buy lots of them and put them in their decks. I especially love the Flame Shadow Conjuring reprint. It's That's, a very interesting card. It's a fun card, and that price tends to creep up if they don't uh, don't stay on it. So mm-hmm. exciting! All right, we're going to talk about the cards, the best cards that are in the ninety nine of this deck, just at, at, at a starting point. So the cards, if they're in your hand, you're so excited, you feel like your deck is really working. Uh, what are the ones that you're you're like? Cool. Yes, for me, yes. Well, obviously, Cloning Hydra. It's it's the big big reprint Hydra worth every penny. Let's read it. <laughs> um, so Colonian Hydra is three and a green green. It is a Hydra. Mm-hmm. It has trample. Colonian Hydra enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. Mm-hmm. Whenever Colonian Hydra attacks, double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. This is so <laughs> scary with Shalai and Halar because <laughs> you're just like pew, 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 pew. so. First of all, if you have Shalai and Halar already on the battlefield, so turn four, you already have them. Colonian Hydra or a slam four damage immediately because it comes in with four damage. Yeah. Next turn, if it attacks, it uh, it puts four more on itself, so minimally four more damage. But also, if you have all these counters, You're you can just be like, all right, I hit you for four, I hit you for five, I hit you for seven. Die. Very fun. It okay. is so. It is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's this next one? Um, my next card is something that 
I mean, I don't, I don't want to say it's an underrated card, but uh, it's Champion of Lamholt, mm. which I'm very familiar with. So powerful. <laughs> it is one and two green. It is a one one human warrior. And then creatures with power less than Champion of Lamholt's power can't block creatures you control. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Champion of Lamholt. <sighs> this card's so good. I, like, I cannot believe how cheap it still is. It's like under a dollar for a champion of Lamhold. And this thing makes your board unblockable with Completely enough counters. Completely unblocked. On it. And we already know there's 38 cards in this deck that put counters on things. Plus, when a creature comes in, like, it just buffs itself. So, minimally, champion of Lamhold, shall I have Nalar, put a counter on it, shoot one thing. Now, like, all my stuff can't be blocked by little things. <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, sweet. I, I always feel good when I've got a champion of lamb hold on board. It means I know I'm doing some damage. Oh, and you get it out on turn three or you get it out on turn two and you're like, oh, what mm -hmm. are you going to do about it? Yeah, you got any. If you get enough counters on this thing, it's just like it's game over. All right. We're going to get into some of the budget upgrade cards the cards we're going to add to this deck to make it feel really tight and powerful at your next game store meetup or at your next hangout uh, we want to make sure that you feel prepared to play this deck but first we're going to listen to a couple of words from our sponsors so big in-person magic events they're back in full swing and when you're preparing for a magic con you need to remember the essentials your magic decks your magic apparel your deodorants please don't forget that one the most important essential of all staying hydrated. So make sure to bring your liquid IV along for the ride. It's a great way to stay hydrated at every step of your trip, from the long flights to the even longer days jamming games at a con. Just mix it in water and you're good to go. One stick of liquid IV gives you five essential vitamins and hydrates you two times faster than water alone, which means you've optimized your water. I personally use liquid IV a ton, whether I'm traveling for magic, out in the desert for wasteland weekend, or even just at home. It's convenient, leaves me feeling good, and their strawberry flavor is my favorite. Basically, it's the perfect way to keep cool and feel cool. Now, look, will it make you as cool as Lady Danger herself? I mean, we can't promise that. But hey, it's a good start. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code COMMAND at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code COMMAND at liquidiv.com. <laughs> the Eldrazi are ravaging Zendikar! Chandra, flame color, call forth your flames! No can do, Gideon. But the Eldrazi! I called my flames three times this month, and my phone bill is crazy high. Plus, inflation's burning through my bank account, so... My Pyro Paisan, you must switch to Mint Mobile. They offer premium wireless service for only 15 bucks a month. Whoa, are they having a fire sale? Not at all, my incandescent comrade. By going online only, Mint Mobile eliminates the cost of retail and passes the savings on to us. With unlimited talk and text on the nation's largest 5G network. I call my allies every day to let them know I'm still alive. And you got to keep your number and contacts? Correct, my fiery friend. Wow. In that case, I'll call my flames right now. Oh, hey, flames. Yeah, can you toast this noodly fool? Thanks. To get your new wireless plan for 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash command. That's mintmobile.com slash command. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash command. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Hey, Rachel, Foundry Inspector. It's a good ramp card, right? Sure. It's cost reduction, so the more spells you cast, the more mana you save. Well, Honey does basically that, but for money. I like money. Tell me more. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for coupons and promo codes so you don't have to. All you do is install Honey and shop online like you normally do. Then when you get to checkout, just click apply coupons and Honey will automatically find any working promos you can apply. And it doesn't just work on desktops, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. No matter what you're buying, dog toys, desk lamps, monitors, video games, Honey can help you find deals on just about anything. So it's just strictly better than shopping normally? Yeah, last week I was looking for a new Bluetooth speaker and honey found me a $35 cashback deal. Huh, that's just enough to buy you a Rhystic study. <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. Josh, you have a problem. Yes, I do. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash command zone. That's joinhoney.com slash command zone. 
All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for listening. We're talking about the uh, call for backup pre-con upgrade. Uh, we're doing Naya counters here. And I want to talk about this deck as a as pre-con product. Yeah, yeah. Like what did what were your first impressions of this deck when you when you played through it? Well, first of all, I was like, plus and plus encounters. I understand that. Yeah, got it. I, it. I, I've played it before, but I've I prefer Simic counters. Mm-hmm. And so when I saw another colorway that I'm very familiar with, I was like, okay, I want to do that. So Nine it counters, got me yeah. excited just off the bat. Mm-hmm. Um, but as the I looked at the deck and I was going through everything, I was like, all right, yeah, for sure it's doing the counter thing, but there's no protection. <laughs> like there's not a lot of protection, like single right. target protection. Or and when you have huge things, you have to protect. These yeah, things. <laughs> and your opponents are going to be scared. Yeah, they're and they will they will target you. Yeah. Um, and it didn't really have a lot of card draw, mm-hmm. which I mean. We are running green, so it is is easy to access. <laughs> it is very accessible. And honestly, this card draw only being four like c- cards that qualify really feel like card draw in the mm-hmm. deck is so low. We yeah. want to see at least 10. Just at least minimum. Yeah. yeah. But we only have $10 and 10 cards to take in and out. So yeah. I'm, I think I made some wise choices. I am excited to hear about them. We've got the 10 cards to add. Remember, we're on a tighter budget this time. 10 cards ten dollars and we're hoping to make a real dent in this deck so but without breaking the bank because you already bought the box yeah you, you, know? you spent whatever you spent on the box you don't want to have to spend another thirty dollars you just spend ten bucks and it is definitely i think the ten dollars makes all of these pretty strong yeah i think i think it does enough all right so what are the cards you added this first category you've got protection protection mm-hmm. um i added snake skin veil mm-hmm. uh which is a little tricky thing um so it's a it's one green uh or one forest uh an in, in instant put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control it gains hex proof until end of the turn <laughs> it's such a cheeky little plus one counter yeah especially with shalai and halar you're just like pink hex proof <laughs> you're like oh you want to target that mm, that's uh. nice actually you <laughs> take one damage and i will protect this <laughs> a snakeskin veil is great especially because you know you're switching into a, a commander that is going to be very scary mm-hmm. your opponents are going to have to remove yeah having this protection and making sure that you have a second layer uh a snakeskin veil if you will a little veil over her very smart over them over oh, them yeah. oh gosh there's two of them i keep forgetting <laughs> uh all right this next category is even more counters oh, especially okay. with shalai and halar you want to be adding huge chunks of counters mm-hmm. yeah yep 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 um so my first card in the even more counter section is invigorating hot springs mm. it is one a red and a green it's an enchantment invigorating hot springs enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it so yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> and then modified creatures you control have haste. And for those of you that don't know, that includes equipment, or as you control, and counters are all modifications. So, hello. Any of creatures that have like an extra little something something on them. Mm-hmm. And then remove a plus one plus one counter from invigorating hot springs. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. So technically you can do it once per Word. like once on your turn once on your opponent's turn once on an opponent's turn yeah. yeah this is great i mean any in these like beater creature decks you really really want haste because mm-hmm. if you have to wait to use them your opponents are just gonna be like that's scary we gotta yeah. get rid of that so making sure all of your creatures with plus one plus one counters are coming down and they're coming fast yes so powerful so good and this card is only 25 cents so cheap so cheap. just a quarter just quarter it's i almost said a, a nickel on it. <laughs> just a nickel it's, it's a monkey in a hot springs how can you not <laughs> you don't want it <laughs> this next card we've been talking about a lot it's a dollar and 50 cents and worth every penny it's evolution sage so good so overlooked oh my god it, it's like when with proliferate on the table it's been it, Especially we've been talking with about the amount of modifications yeah. and things that are happening. It says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, proliferate. So all of those single uh, counters? plus one plus one counters, turn them into two, turn them into three, turn them into four. Every land. Really powerful. Really powerful. So good. Also, I, I love these um, when you can tick it up just one by one because you can be really precise with how you deal your damage. Mm-hmm. So it's like you, you if you have Evolution Sage and you proliferate with five creatures, you get five instances of one damage. So you yep. can be like one to you, one to you, one to you, one to you again. Actually, one more to you. <laughs> and you get two. Yeah. <laughs> You can do little spite pings. It's fun. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> that's a great ad and very powerful in this. Yeah, book. I think it's a little overlooked, and especially with All Will Be One, with the toxic counters and things like that, you know, proliferate is very strong and super underrated. Mm-hmm. Um, but my next card, which I don't think is underrated anymore, I think everybody knows about it. Yeah, it's Felidar Retreat. It's so, so good. <laughs> it is so good. So it is three and a white enchantment. We are a big fan of enchantments because they're hard to get rid of. Mm-hmm. Um, landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Create a 2-2 two, two white cat beast creature token um, or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance till end of turn. So good. So if you got a big board out and you have your commander out and you play followed our retreat and then you play your land because mm-hmm. you want to make sure you sequence that correctly. Um, you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature. And you're just like, okay, I put a counter on everything, and then a boom, 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 boom. And then you attack, and you still have your blockers up. So strong. <laughs> the reason why Felidar, Gar- Felidar Retreat, excuse me, is so powerful is because it's great when you have a full board, and it's great when you have an empty board. Because yep. then you can play Felidar Retreat, play a land, get a cat. You don't have to worry about the about the plus one counters just yet. You just start building up your board. So when you play Shalai and Halar, or you put plus one counters on all your creatures, you have as many creatures as possible. Mm-hmm. Yep. Really powerful in this deck. And only a dollar for the upgrade. I'm so glad they keep reprinting this. Oh, it's so good. Um, another, I think this card is underrated, but yeah, I, so could, I could be wrong. Um, it's Lizelle Vlakin's Champion. I think I said that right. Um, it is two and a white. It is a uh, Gith Warrior 3-3. Three, three. If you would put one or more counters on a creature or a Planeswalker you control or on yourself, put that many plus one, plus one counters. Wait. That, that many, many plus, plus one. one of <laughs> each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. Pretty good. Double so up. This it's a little hardened scales basically, except for for any kind of counter. But in this deck, it's a it's, it's a hardened scales. Yeah. yeah. It's so it, it it turns one into two. Turn it turn makes proliferates really really good. Oh yeah, you got that in evolution stage. You play land and you're just like. Oh. Everybody's everybody's feeling the pain. Yeah, Lazel's a great include, especially for only a dollar and twenty five cents here. Mm-hmm. Uh, this next one I love to see in any deck. It's so scary on the other side of the battlefield. It really is, and I don't see it very often. Yeah. Uh, it's Holland and Elena partners. So it's Shalai and Halar, Holland and Elena. That's a big mouthful of words. <laughs> <laughs> two red and a green for human ranger. It's a two three with first strike and reach secret reach. And then at the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control where X is Holland and Elena's power. And that creature gains haste until end of turn. This card's so good. It's especially with Shalai and Halar. Right. Because you you already have a bunch of counters. You put a bunch of counters on Halana Helena, and then they go to attack. Right. They turn a ton of counters into a lot more counters. So if yeah. you can buff the power of Halana and Helena, you can put six, eight counters on another creature, blast somebody for six or eight damage, and then it has haste. <laughs> <laughs> and then you still get to attack. <laughs> Oh, boy. Holland and Elena is only 75 cents and is such a powerhouse in decks like this. I love this ad. Oh, so good. So good. Um, so my next ad is Grumgully the Generous. <laughs> he is one, a red and a green. He's a 3-3 three, three goblin shaman. Each other non-human creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. And now... When I first looked at it, I was like, okay, wait, a lot of plus one plus one encounter decks tend to be humans. So I was like, based, yeah. and this card is all about non-humans. So when I went and I looked through, there was actually a lot of creatures that were non-human and Which had are. non-human subtypes, actually 28 to be exact. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I knew I could include this without feeling really bad and not getting the most out of it. For sure. And I think... In plus one, plus one counter decks, laying the base layer of counters is so important. Making sure that every creature has a plus one, plus one counter on it makes your other cards so much more powerful, especially something like Invigorating Hot Springs, Mm -hmm. which like can put plus one, plus one counters on stuff, but just gives everything with plus one, plus one counters haste. Mm -hmm. Uh, Grum Gully is a huge ad. I also considered maybe like Rhythm of the Wild, but that was way too expensive. Yeah, a little bit out of budget. So I love something. I love that they're like this combination of things mm-hmm. basically does the same thing. Yeah. High synergy, low price. Like, yeah, so low. 25 <laughs> cents low. Yeah. Crumb Gully is a cheap boy. <laughs> All right. Well, we know this this deck needed card draw pretty desperately. So this is a big, so a big section. All right. So my first card draw entry 
to to the room is mm, return of the wild speaker great it is a four and a green instant choose one draw car draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control and non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three till end of turn and as mm -hmm. we said with grem gully we know we have a lot of non-human uh, creatures so yeah. this is going to be super great for us yeah, and Return of the Wild Speaker is, is it's sort of the same as Felidar Retreat. It's great when you're behind, so because mm -hmm. you can draw a ton of cards and you can get that, like, try and catch up with everybody. It's also great when you're ahead because you're like, give everything plus three, plus three, try and close out this game. Yeah, it's a great, uh, versatile is the word I was looking for. <laughs> and instant speed. It's so scary. Yeah. You can attack. People don't uh, use this at instant speed enough. Yeah, you where should it's attack, like, you wait attack for first blocks. and then buff. Yes. yes. Very cool. Sequencing is really hard, especially yeah. for newer players and I think just learning sequencing better will give you so much more payoff in the end. Take advantage of that instant speed. It's an instant for a reason and you're paying the cost for it because they costed it to be an instant. So make sure you're using it as one. Uh, this next one is, oh, Return of the Wild Speaker is $2.25 taking up a little bit of the budget yeah. but worth every penny. Really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, this next one is so crazy in the stack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was so excited You've when I told read it. you. You've got to read okay, it. Okay, so this is Snake Umbra. It is two and a green enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. It also has totem armor, which if enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy this aura. This is doing so much work in this deck. It protects Shalai and Halar and also turns them into an unstoppable draw engine. Oh, so good! Uh, for what is worth, if you uh, we can do a quick reread of Shalai and Halar. They do the damage. So it says, whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, Shalai and Halar deals that much damage to target opponent. Snake Umbra notably does not care if it's combat or non-combat damage. So any time you put plus one, plus one counters on anything, Shalai and Halar will deal damage and draw you a card. Yeah. And it's protected. So yeah. if somebody tries to destroy it, well, they don't. You just, you just get their removal out. Yeah. You lose Snake Umbra, but um, ugh, you get to keep your, your engine, your power, your, your laser mm -hmm. <laughs> on board. All right. Uh, this next one is a... Um, awesome budget upgrade uh, I, for so, only a dollar. One dollar. Yeah. One dollar. And uh, spoiler, it's a budget Toski. Yeah. Uh, the card is uh, Th Thaddeus, Thaddeus. Ju Thaddeus Juniper Ascendant. It is a two, a green and a white, uh, which is Selesnia for mm -hmm. those that don't know. Um, it is a human monk that is one three. It has reach. Uh, Taddeus has hexproof unless it's attacking. Whenever a creature you control with reach attacks, untap it, and it can't be blocked by creatures with greater power this combat. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. So the first part of this, we don't really care too much. Yeah. But the second part of this is really where this is shining. I mean, first first of all, this gives Holland and Elena vigilance, basically. Mm -hmm. Because they, she, they have reach. Uh, but... Yeah, whenever they deal damage, you draw a card. Yeah. That's like... Which, when you Toski pay... Toski is like a $14 card. Yeah. The snake one that is like $22. Oh, wild. Taddeus does that, but mm -hmm. for only $1. For one whole doll hair. It's honestly really, um, really strong. And I was trying to figure out, like, I always like collaborating with people in the office when it comes mm. to budget upgrades. And I had it pretty much everywhere I wanted. And I was like, okay, I still have like a dollar or two mm. left. And I was like, you know, does anybody have any good ideas? And then actually Garav, which you're probably familiar with mm -hmm. this card. Yeah. Um, he mentioned it to me and he's like, I love this card. It's so good. And mm. then I read it and I was like, oh boy, howdy. I'm putting yeah. that in there. This, for people who don't recognize the name, uh, Taddeus is the, it's the universes within version of one of the Street Fighter card, Dalsum. And it's so cheap because they printed a ton of these mm -hmm. in the set boosters. So this effect that's normally so expensive is only a dollar here. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, uh, pick up a Tadius for sure, especially if you're playing Celestia. Oh my gosh, so good in Celestia. I love this. So we've added 10 cards to this to this deck. You were perfect on the budget. Your total is $9.50. Just squeaking in there with some awesome upgrades, especially some big card draw spells, which this deck 
definitely needs. Mm-hmm. Um, we are working on a tighter budget than normal this yeah. time. We're doing 10 cards, $10. So obviously that means some cards aren't going to fit into the budget or they're just not worth the amount of the budget that mm-hmm. they take up. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some honorable mentions that could be added to this list and would be improvements, but are going to involve a little bit more of a spendy upgrade. Yes. So I have two. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first one, which we already mentioned before, will be all will be one. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about it. It's great. It's going to do double the things, all of the things. Yeah. Um, and would be very strong in this deck. For sure. Um, my second one is Kodama of the West Tree. Very powerful. Uh, it's worth mentioning all will be one is $12. So a little bit outside the budget. Kodama of the West Tree is $11, but also very powerful. Mm-hmm. You want to read it? Yeah. Kodama of the West Tree is two and a green. It is a a legendary creature spirit, three, three with reach. Modified creatures you control have trample. And then whenever a modified creature you control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So powerful. Giving all of your big creatures trample is Mm -hmm. a huge part of this card. And a little bit of gravy every time you hit, you also get a land. Yeah. Ugh. Kodama is so powerful and worth $11 if you want to spend a little bit of extra money on this deck. Yeah. All right, we've added 10 new cards, which means we have to do the hardest thing in deck building. We have to take 10 cards out. What are the 10 cards that weren't aren't like a perfect use of the synergy, especially because we're trading commanders. We're mm-hmm. moving from the backup commander to the secondary commander. I yeah. mean, the the face commander with backup to the secondary <laughs> commander to Lion Alar. A lot of synergy. Uh, it can be swapped out. Yep. So the first card I took out was Strionic Resonator. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great, but because our commander now doesn't have backup, it's just... Not as great. Yeah. A ceramic resonator says two and tap copy target triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. So it would be okay with Shalayan Halar. You can you can uh, double the, the damage dealing mm-hmm. trigger, but because you're putting so many counters on it, it's not really worth the extra yeah. mana. You just kind of want to put more counters on yeah. stuff. It's very good with backup, however. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, the next card I cut was Enduring Scale Lord, which is four, a green and a white. It is a uh, dragon, a four, four dragon with flying. Whenever one or more plus one, plus one counters are put onto another creature you control, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on Enduring Scale Lord. This is a six mana four, four that doesn't have any counters on his own. He's yeah. he's just kind of he's just kind of naked unless you have somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which hypothetically you would have ways that things would come in. It is right. a non-human. So with Grim Gully it would be fine, but 6 mana is so so expensive. Yeah. Um with this deck because your commander is kind of scary, you want to be able to get out and do fast damage mm-hmm. and Turn six, I don't want to be dropping this. I want to be dropping yeah. like two things that give everything counters and stuff like that. So yeah. um, not not a fan. Enduring Scale Lord is another one that's probably better with backup because mm-hmm. you have something in the command zone that'll put counters on it. Yep. But with Shalayan Halar, you just can't pay six mana for something that doesn't have any counters yeah. on it. All right, what's this next one? This next card is a Falconrath Exterminator. I know you do like this card. It is an interesting card. <laughs> um, it's one in a red. It is a Vampire Archer. One, one, whenever Falconrath Exterminator deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And it has a mana ability, which is two in a red. Falconrath Exterminator deals damage to target creature equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on Falconrath Exterminator. Okay. So a powerful effect, but it's similar to Enduring Scale Lord. It just doesn't come in with any counters. Yeah. It's very hard to get counters on a 1-1 one, one in Commander. Like, if, if you need to connect with it, he doesn't yeah. have any evasion. <laughs> no, no evasion. So, like, maybe late game it could be viable mm-hmm. after it, maybe it's sitting back, you know, just hanging out for a while. But I don't want anything to sit back and hang out for a while. Right. I want to be able to do the thing immediately. Right. You could incidentally maybe get counters on it, but Mm -hmm. it's better, like, again, this would would have been better with backup in the command zone. 100%. Um, So my next card I cut is Flame Shadow Conjuring. It is three and a red enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay red. If you do, put a token onto the battlefield that is a copy of that creature. That token gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. A very cool card. Mm Mm-hmm. Great in a lot of decks. I didn't want it. <laughs> a, little, a little weird in this deck. <laughs> yeah. It's, like I said, some of these cuts, 
I just wasn't feeling these cards mm -hmm. and I wanted to simplify the direction of the deck. So this is a lot of words on it. You're doing a lot of things. Things are getting exiled. You're paying mana for it. And while it is really cool, I was just like, too much information for me. Yeah, these these copy spells, and this will apply to the next one, I, th I think are better with ETB creatures, which mm -hmm. means it may be more focused on like a specifically backup build, mm -hmm. where it's like, and now if you have two copies of it, you could back up two things, you could yeah. back up one creature multiple times and give it an ability that stacks. And that's very powerful. But if you're building around Shalai and Halar, and you're focusing just on plus one plus one counters, it's a little funky. Yeah. Um, so the other card Rachel was referring to was Flame Rush Rider. It is four and a red. It's a human warrior, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever Flame Rush Rider attacks, create a token that's a copy of another target attacking creature, and that's tapped and attacking. Exile exile the token at the end of combat it has dash it, which you pay two and a red red you may cast this spell for its dash cost if you do it gains haste and it is returned from the battlefield to its owner hand at the beginning of the next end step mm -hmm. so yeah it's a similar thing to flame shadow Con conjuring a little mm -hmm. better with backup not as good uh in a deck with that just, really cares about counters yeah. so our next one is emergent woodworm it is six and a green. Wow, it's a, expensive. Yeah. It is a worm. It is four, four, and it has backup three. Whenever this creature attacks, look at the top X cards of your library where X is its power. You may put a permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay. So what this card says, <laughs> simplify it for me, Rachel, seven mana worm that comes down and puts three plus one plus one counters on a creature. Mm -hmm. It could put it on itself and give itself this ability. It, like it, it just put, it just makes it bigger. Uh, or it could put three plus one counters on another creature that you already control. And then when that creature attacks, you'd check its power. So mm -hmm. three plus whatever, whatever it was, it let's say it, it's an eight, eight. You look at the top eight cards of your library. You put something eight CMC or less onto the battlefield, uh, eight mana value or less mm -hmm. onto the battlefield. It's a very powerful effect, but paying seven mana to cheat something into play is is not it's not exactly mana cheating no it's i don't think there's a net <laughs> mana cheating there i think it's pretty like you would have to hit a seven drop to be mana neutral and it's gotta it. be a good seven yeah drop yeah, too. yeah be 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 worth the effort there yeah yeah so wasn't feeling it it's mm. just also complicated so i was looking for simplicity mm. um so my next card i chose to get rid of is Iker elixir it's mm. four mana for an artifact if you'd roll one or more planar dice instead roll that many planar dice plus one and ignore one um it taps add mana i'm fine we've got so much ramp in this deck yeah i was okay to cut icker elixir yeah spending four mana to ramp in this deck it's got a fairly low curve it doesn't seem super important especially with 14 ramp spells in yeah i was Is that correct yes i believe yeah. we, we said 15 14 <laughs> 15 ramp cards. <laughs> 15 ramp yeah. cards. That's so, that's plenty. We can cut the four mana one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we also got rid of Fractured Power Stone, which is a two mana um, artifact, and you can tap for a colorless to add to your mana pool, or you can roll the planar die. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. <laughs> yeah. So these are very focused on plane planar, chase. Yeah, plane chase. You can still run them if you're not playing plane chase. That ability just doesn't do anything. But yeah, it's, it's more of a plane chase card. Mm-hmm. My second to last card was Path of the Pyromancer. Uh, it is a four mana. I'm sorry. It is four and a red sorcery. Discard all the cards in your hand. Add red for each card discarded this way. Then draw that many cards plus one. It also has Will of the Planeswalkers. Starting with you, each player votes for Planeswalker or Chaos. If Planeswalker gets more votes, uh, Planeswalk... Of so course. Move from one plane to another. And if chaos gets more votes uh, or the vote is tied, chaos ensues. It's more planes. Planes ability. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a very powerful card. I don't like discard all the cards in your hand, add red for each card discarded this way, then draw that many cards plus one is a very powerful effect mm -hmm. in certain decks. Yeah. It is a little strange in this deck. I understand maybe because of the whole plane chase thing. So Will of the mm. Planeswalkers having it in there. Um, for this deck specifically in the direction we're going with i 
was like, no, it's okay. And there's no guarantee you're going to have that many cards in your hand. Like there's very low sources of card, card draw. Drops. So if this is five mana, discard two cards, make two mana, draw t- two cards. Like it's it's not as good as it would be in a deck where you're drawing a ton of cards and have a huge hand. Yeah, it, it's sure. not going to be your Jessica's will in this deck. Right. It will be amazing in certain decks. But. <laughs> Um, and my final card I cut is Triskelion. Mm-hmm. It is a six mana construct, one, one. Triskelion adds, um, Triskelion enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it. Remove a plus one plus one counter from Triskelion. Triskelion deals one damage to target creature or player. I do like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'd be fun because we're already like, you know, pointing damage around the table, mm-hmm. but it's six mana. Six mana, yeah. And this, it comes in, it puts counters on itself. It seems like it does a lot of the stuff the deck wants to do. But again, three, like, you really want more than three three counters. Mm-hmm. You, but I understand six mana is a lot, six mana is a lot uh, in a deck like this that wants to be moving fast and dealing damage. We're doing things. Aggro. Um, yeah. All right. So let's talk about what the deck actually feels like when you're when you're playing the deck we've got yeah. all the upgrades you yep. sleeved it up in your ultra pro sleeves it's in an ultra pro deck box and you've showed up your game <laughs> store and you're gonna play it what what how do you want a game to play out um for me obviously there's tons of ramps so you want to ramp see if you can get your commander out you know turn three mm-hmm. instead of turn four yeah um and start blasting counters onto it and mm. like producing tokens and creatures so you can start swinging out early and dealing a lot of damage um you don't want to overcommit too much because people will board wipe yeah, you they will so have to. i think um sequencing and making sure you're really taking account everything that's happening at the table while you're attacking who you're attacking um will play a huge deal in how long you can keep your commander out right this is a very aggressive strategy. You're like, we are coming out of the gates swinging and you are going to be the problem quickly. So recognizing how much like you commit to the board. So when they inevitably answer you because mm-hmm. they will have to or they will die, uh, you still have cards in hand where you can a- enact the plan after yep. a board wipe happens. Mm-hmm. For sure. So important when you're playing an aggro strategy, especially a scary <laughs> aggro strategy. <laughs> and if you do get board wiped, uh, I recommend kind of like holding back a little bit. Oh, mm. I'm having such a hard time rebuilding. <laughs> oh, let them take care of themselves a little bit right. and then come out of the gate and be Think like, oh, safe just and kidding. Then, wait, blam, 12 damage, 15. <laughs> you're dead. Thanks for the board wipe, Jack. <laughs> I don't know who Jack is. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Jack. Stop board wiping, Jack. All right, to the listeners, what do you think of the call for backup pre-con? Any cards we missed that you're like, this would be great in the deck and it's on budget, get it in the deck. Uh, Any cards we suggested to take out or add that you disagree with? You're like, you're nuts. That card rules. Uh, We want to hear about it. We are in the comments. We are reading these things. And we do think these these pre-cons are awesome. So we're going to be there. We're going to be talking with you about the call for backup pre-con and all of the other pre-cons. Make sure you keep an eye out for all of our budget upgrades. Uh, We're adding 10, taking away 10 on a $10 budget for all of these pre-cons for March of the Machine. If you saw any cards today that you were interested in, you're like, I got to get it for my Naya deck, for the for my call for backup deck, or any of your plus one plus one counter decks, go to cardkingdom.com slash command. They've got a huge selection of cards that you to make sure that you get the cards that you want. I know if you're working on a budget, sometimes you'll buy like a more damaged card or you'll buy a lower quality card because it still hits just the same. And you can get uh, any card in any sort of quality or printing that you want to make your deck exactly how you want it and spend exactly what you want. Plus, Card Kingdom will ship it all in one tidy package and it'll show up on your doorstep safe. You can sleeve it up immediately. You can get it mixed into this pre-con so you can go to your game store and get playing immediately. You're not spending your time tracking down cards and making sure you have everything. So go to cardkingdom.com slash command to pick up all of the magic cards you need and support the command zone. We really appreciate it. While you're supporting the show, you can do so by going to ultrapro.com slash command. They're the best place that you can get high quality magic accessories for organizing and just blinging out your magic collection. I like uh, Ultra Pro specifically for the binders Mm. and for like the card sorters and stuff. I'm very particular about how my 
collection is sorted so I can find everything and everything's safe when I do. So I use Ultra Pro to make sure that my collection is in a place and in a state that I'm comfortable with it and that I can find everything I'm looking for. Seriously, the card sorters are like my favorite. <laughs> like, oh, I can sort by alphabetically and then by color very specific about how, where the, where my cards end up going. So if you're specific to, or you just like things to look sweet and you want to rep the magic art that you love, go to ultrapro.com slash command. All right, we're going to move into the end step. Let's talk about something cool outside the world of magic. What are you enjoying right now that isn't magic related? Um, gosh, putting me on the spot here. Yeah. Not magic related. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess so something that I'm working on right now, um, that I'm super interested in is belly dancing. Yeah. <laughs> You've been I, doing a ton of it lately. I, yeah, and I'm about to leave to go to Portland to do some like certifications and classes. So yeah. belly dancing, it's a great activity. It's you know, you don't need to be flexible. It gives mm -hmm. you a lot of body awareness. It's great aerobics and mm -hmm. great to get your heart pumping. And it's much harder than you would think it. You're like, oh, oh you God. just get to shake around a little bit and i'm like oh oh no it's so much it's, control yeah. it's crazy i'm like always blown away by belly dancing and you're going you'll be performing at the renaissance fair yeah right? i was gonna renaissance fair was gonna be the other one but then yeah. i remembered i think one of my last ones i said the renaissance fair <laughs> uh, but yeah i'll be performing at the southern california renaissance fair uh wow. so if you're gonna be going to those you can come check me out with all my friends uh we're gonna be balancing swords on our heads oh and pots and doing all kinds of crazy pots. well they're like little pots that you classic put on your sword yeah. and pot show <laughs> yeah <laughs> your good old classic sword and pot show we're gonna be rolling around um <laughs> But it's really cool. And so if you've ever wanted to try it, I recommend seeing if there's any classes. Try it. Um, it's for everyone, any mm -hmm. size, any anybody, any person, any human can do it. Um, it's just a little hard. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, go check out Belly Dan Dancing and come to the Renaissance Fair if you're in the California Huzzah! area. It's so much fun. Also, it tours all over the country. If you've never been to the Renaissance Fair, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. It's good eating. It's fun drinking. It's a great place to friend hang, hang out with friends in costume or not. And it's, it's supporting the arts. Like yeah. people travel around making their living doing this and they're, yeah. you know, swallowing swords and they're Throw, you know, throwing whips and juggling whips. My friend's like a world record holder. Like he holds the Guinness World Record for the most amount of like whip cracks and juggling and all kinds of crazy stuff. And that's, you know, where a lot of the theater mm -hmm. is going if you're not going to like Broadway, but it's right. a, it's live theater. So you're supporting artists directly. So it's really cool. Yeah, the, it's full of live performers. It's also f full of like tradesmen where they're mm -hmm. like leather crafters and woodworkers and like people who bead and make jewelry and all this stuff. So go support the vendors, the performers. Uh, Renaissance Fair is always a ton of fun. All right, uh, let's move to the cleanup step and say thank you to the amazing team we here, have here at the Command Zone. Thank you to Craig Blanchett, Damon Lentz, Arthur Meadowcroft, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldo, Gaurav Galati, Jamie Block, Mitch Trafford, Evan Limberger, Gabriel Pozos, Megan Yep, Eric Lem, Josh Lee Kwai, and Jimmy, Jimmy Wong. Wong. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. You rock. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>